listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Awkward After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Awkward After Show. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another episode of Awkward, MTV's Awkward. This is season two, episode six. That feels about right. Episode six feels about right. Uh, what comes first, sex or love? Okay. So, Crystal, did it's we <laughs> not have so much fun watching this episode? I mean, I feel like every week through the throughout the season, it's just gotten better and better. And I have a harder yes. time like you. You always talk about how it's so hard to take notes because you're so into it. And I completely forgot to take notes this episode yeah. <laughs> for the first 10 minutes because I was just so excited and laughing and into it. And I don't even know where to begin when to take notes. Yeah, I, you know what? I Jeez. think uh, if, if we were to confess, we would confess that this feels sort of like a new breed of show for us yeah. to do an after show. You know, we're used to reality. We're used to, but we are total super fans of Awkward. The biggest. Yeah, we're, we're we we you know we lo we got to meet Sadie last week Molly Tarloff she was in studio she you guys can you guys can see that on in our archives on YouTube you can listen to the podcast she was here made us laugh had a good time <laughs> um, and uh, in also upcoming I mean this, maybe this is news but we've got uh, Jillian Rose Reed will be in the studio coming up as well as Nikki Deloach uh, all you know from Awkward so <clears throat> it's you know. We're having fun, and we just want to do. I think we're watching the show, and we talked about it. We're feeling the pressure to make sure we do a good job because we love the show. But man, it's so fast, and we're loving everything. It but really so is. much is going on, and really, the dialogue is just like ninety miles an hour. It really, it's so fast that it's like I said, it's hard to take notes because they're going through everything. And when you're in the middle of of writing or you know remembering one funny thing, they say another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're constantly one. Yeah. But you know what? And the other thing I'm impressed with. Here, here is okay obviously the writing is amazing yes. i mean really they're like poets they really it's, it's really like are. poetry it's very witty yeah it's witty it's and but you've got not just one character or two characters that can deliver this poetry mm -hmm. perfectly everybody in the opening you know little scene there i mean after you know jenna does her little you know trying to stay distracted from the fact that jake told her she loved him and all this stuff here comes uh ally <laughs> saying what's up little bitch and all of her stuff and even her stuff is like bam 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 it's so fast and so good you know? I feel like every character just has a really great storyline throughout every episode it's there's no small part in this series is totally. really how I feel about it even the minor characters you know yeah totally like Ali like her you know her story and her character almost has nothing to do with the main plot right but we love hearing her. Yeah. We love oh, watching sure. her and hearing whatever it is. Whenever she's on the camera, <laughs> like everybody, it's great. Um, so the whole, you know the theme definitely was all the way through it. What comes first, sex or love? And you know it was all about like what is love, and how do you know you're in love really? Mm -hmm. And then what role does sex play in that? And you know do you can you be in love before you have sex and stuff? You know what's interesting also is that you know these I guess are questions that you know a young person that's in in their age group right now might be asking like they definitely, don't know definitely definitely and I think a lot of the uh, the title also ties in with the reoccurring storyline of the the line with friendships and uh -huh. and this episode in particular was kind of touching on different pieces of that so exactly okay so let's talk about uh we're, we're doing we're doing our wonderful categories in the in the order that crystal gave us <laughs> it's our first time doing it ladies and gentlemen so support no maddie and jenna so what 
what were you thinking when we were talking when you were talking about that? Well, of course, Maddie and Jenna are my favorite to hear about to see to see what's going to happen with them. Is there still going to be the tension there? Last episode, being at Valentine's Day, we saw that you know there were still feelings that kind of you know yes. like is are they trying to make each other jealous are they not this episode was really weird for me it kind of you know i, I felt myself making a little sad face because uh -huh. we saw a different side of maddie trying to be more friendly with jenna and saying hey we're friends now so let's make moves towards being friends but was he genuine in that do you think okay so if Molly Tarloff is happens to be watching, if she's watching, <laughs> Molly, you feel free to call in and then you can give me a hard time about what I'm about to say. <laughs> That's bull crap. He, I think he was enjoying the teasing. I mean, now listen, I'm not saying that Maddie doesn't have any feelings for Jenna. Mm -hmm. He obviously, I, you know, he does. Right. But I still think that he's in there and like... In the middle of, I mean, he's not like a total complete jerk, but in the middle of him enjoying teasing her, uh, you know, because remember when um, Jake had the conversation with Maddie and then Maddie goes and talks to Jenna. Mm -hmm. And so here they are. They've had sex. They've been intimate. They've had sex a bunch of times. And he's claiming, you know, hey, maybe I should just tell Jake, your boyfriend, what to do and not to do when he's having sex with you. And we're just going, whoa, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. And he's got this sort of, you know, confidence. And she's like, I don't have any do's and don'ts. You know, worst thing she could have said, because all he has to do is say, yeah, you do. Yeah, but for me in this episode, and, and I, you know, I started out this season saying, you know what, Maddie, too little, too late. And going through the episodes, especially last episode, uh -huh. I, he's kind of changing my feelings. And I don't know, like, I didn't feel like he was saying what he was to try and play games with her. I feel like he is kind of coming to terms with, okay, like, I was in love with Jenna. I kind of still am. She's moving on. I need to respect that. And mm. if she loves me or what, what's the saying? If you love something, set it let free. It go, let yeah, it, yeah, and see it if it'll free. come back. So maybe he's doing something like that. Okay, no. I think no, so. No, full crap. <laughs> <laughs> he is completely doing the sabotage thing, except at the end, he changes. And I think that the writers are, you know, instructing the actor to do this on purpose. He changes from sabotage to, but you know what? Regardless of the fact that I want to sabotage and get you back, yo, if you're not going to come back to me, be easy on Jake. Yeah. He's nervous and he really lo likes you. Yeah. Like, Maddie is torn because he's got a genuine you know, loyalty to his friend. Of course. Right? Which we've seen, it's like, we, we know it's real, but at the same it time... It only goes so far because they have secrets. Yeah, because there's secrets. Yeah. So I think they set us up. Uh, that's I, that's why I think, you know, it was totally sabotage. I mean, he was enjoying it. He was enjoying the fact that <gasps> I can come up and talk to her and I can be cool and sexy and everything and there's still chemistry and she's laughing and joking she's saying don't tell him that see i didn't get that vibe this oh, episode man. i thought it was a genuine thing and i think that it's obvious that he still has feelings for her and i think he's just trying to or beginning to respect the territories well don't you think that she still has feelings for him don't you think that she's he's she's still like the I chemistry is there i do i i feel it and i think the writers want us to feel it and maybe we'll see what happens but i think that i think i think like i said he's just trying to respect her territory and we're going to talk about and when we get to the third topic jake and and jenna where i think there's no chemistry <laughs> it's completely manufactured but I anyway disagree. you disagree okay well wait wait we gotta get go get to that okay but in the meantime uh, uh, let me tell our listeners about uh, uh, our relationship with Amazon. Uh, Amazon, ladies and gentlemen, if you've if you've watched our shows and enjoyed them, uh, you've also probably heard us tell you that we all do this on a volunteer basis. Nobody's getting paid here, uh, but we do need money to keep things going. And a way that you listeners and viewers can help us out is is by way of your Amazon purchases. Really easy for you to do. Uh, if you buy things on Amazon, all we ask is that instead of going directly to the Amazon.com website, you first go to AfterBuzzTV.com, and then there's an Amazon link. Uh, when you click on that link, it'll take you directly to the Amazon site, and you can do your shopping like normal. Same price. Everything's good and normal for you. Use your Prime account, but AfterBuzz gets a referral fee uh, when you do that, so you're able to help everything stay free here like we like it. And uh, it, it just really helps out. So if you do that, we appreciate it. And we'll thank you every time we do a show. Um, 
Okay, so next is... Uh, Oh God, this was so awesome. <laughs> Mo again, I'm gonna say another message to Molly. Molly, you were amazing yeah. in this episode. It was so good. I tweeted to her because I was so excited. Oh God, you know what? I don't even how how'd you tweet? I can't even take notes. <laughs> She's tweeting over here. Uh so Sadie's got this thing with Ricky. Totally like uh what's the word? Um not passive aggressive, but antagonistic, whatever. She's like the whole episode. Mm-hmm. She's like just telling him you're nothing to me, and God, why are you talking? She's being yeah. typical Sadie with him, and and the you know I'm I'm too tough for love type of thing. So okay, so but why? Like why is she? Cause she wasn't like that with Maddie. No, I think that after the whole Maddie situation, she just needed to kind of get her fix. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, okay. Okay. That's how I saw it. So and we saw the change of heart throughout the episode with that. Okay. How about this? Why? Yes. Why Ricky? Why Ricky? Um, that's a good question, and I wish I had seen the scene before uh -huh, they were uh -huh. in the bathroom. Oh, I, oh I, I yeah, don't okay. Know. <laughs> well, I think uh, I think it's Ricky because first she knows that he'll go with any girl, so she she won't be rejected oh, by that's him. A good point. That's one. And two, Sadie is not just gonna pick a guy without creating a whole bunch mm -hmm. of drama. And so she's gonna pick a guy that she knows, and uh, she must love it that. The only thing she would love more is if she could get a guy that Jenna likes, yeah. which she almost did with Maddie tried, in the garage, yeah. right? But so she's next best thing is Jenna's friend, and either way, she's only going to go for a guy that's got you know a girl that likes him. I think Sadie is thinking about herself in this situation and not really anyone else as much. Oh man, <laughs> she is so fun. I mean, she tells a dude, "Look, you know, I don't do band geeks." Like, remember that aggressive. Like, I don't know how you call it a sex scene, but the aggressive scene in the, um, oh man, Phil's going to say, Ed, you're a bad host for forgetting this. What do they call the area under the bleachers? <laughs> As you're saying this, I'm thinking about it in my head. <sighs> and they just did an episode title and I'm doing that thing where if you think about it too hard, you can't remember. Oh yeah, so you can forget at it. midnight tonight, I'll jump up and remember. because remember. remember the guy said, oh, we've been TMZ. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sanctuary? Is anyone listening? Call in. Is it Tell the us. sanctuary? The sanctuary. Yes. Is it? Ding, okay. Ding, ding, ding. The so they're in the sanctuary. Which, okay, did they block the camera still? Because aren't think, they being TMZ? Does Sadie want to be on the camera? I think they got rid of that issue. I think that they're past it and they're not worried about it. Okay, and, yeah. so no big deal. So they're in the <laughs> sanctuary where this stuff goes down. And oh my God, Sadie was acting like a grown woman. I know she grabbing was. this dude and a dude, and he's saying, "I want something to be between us." And she says, "I know it's between us, and I'll let it breathe if you stop talking." Hi MTV, you're forward. Whoa. <laughs> Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Sadie's trying to get her fix. Mm -hmm. She's being all aggressive. He's talking about, but I want to be with you, doll face. <laughs> Which, of course, is just crazy to listen to and hear after we saw the relationship between him and Tamara. Which, they so beautifully tiptoed the two storylines and yeah. relationships around each other. I mean, they really picked up in one, I forget the line that it was, but they had one line that Sadie said something about, I'll see you tonight. And then Tamara was walking over to Jenna and said, I know what you're doing tonight. And it's <laughs> yes. and neither you know she has no idea what's going on and Sadie isn't really rubbing it in her face yet it's still very secretive and that's the other thing yes. see this is kind of going against you're saying that she is uh, picking Ricky because she you know likes that she's causing drama but she doesn't want anyone to know she keeps hiding it yeah, yeah. that's true that's I, I mean, true I mean she's going to extreme lengths to keep it a secret by saying don't look at me pick up your cell phone pretend that you're talking to someone so yes I am yeah, that's true. super excited to see what happens with Sadie's character. Well, um, this episode for Sadie was just awesome. Yes. Molly and just delivered all her lines. It was so amazing uh, when she um, was taught when she came up to. I had to pause it because I was laughing <laughs> so hard when she came up to Jenna and put the dollar in her shirt and said, "What's up, you uh, suicidal slut?" I mean, we saw that in the preview, but the rest of her line right there was so good. Gives her dollar, gets used to it. That's how you're gonna pay your way through college. You're welcome. It, I'm it ties it together. <laughs> oh my God, she's just so. It was so. I don't know. It was just deep good and writing. extremely funny yeah. and and done perfectly. Um, okay, so uh, Sada and Ricky, and then Tamara's character. I mean, Tamara when she's encountering Ricky, it's, it's hilarious. Ricky, what did he say? He said, "Hey, beautiful." She's all die. <laughs> it, I must have been writing because I missed that. Okay, part. when he came out of the sanctuary, oh yeah, and we're gonna try to watch this episode like twice. We're yes. gonna try to squeeze in two. Yes. Um, from now on, uh, but when he came out of the sanctuary, sanctuary with Sadie, 
he comes out and he looks at Tamara and he says, hey, beautiful. And she goes, die. See, I missed that because I was right. Yeah, it was hilarious. It happened so fast. Um, happened so fast. And OK, and then uh, we got to give uh, Tamara her props because we got another bunch of words from her or we got a bunch of words this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, one couple from some random guys. But I don't I couldn't figure out, even though we, we rebound it. Yeah. Ho- Holy Bulgoli. Holy Bulgoli, which I don't know what that means. So if anyone's listening and they have any idea, please <clears throat> write us reviews, call yes. in. We would love to Holy hear your Bulgoli. opinions. We don't know. That no was in clue. the beginning when they were walking with Ming, when Jen was walking with Ming. Um, and Jenna said that her saying awesome. Well, actually, maybe she was saying this about Jake's I love you, but she called it premature, premature em- emo ejaculation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh and then um Oh and oh uh remember the guy that walked by while they were talking in the hall because we did talk about oh, that yes, scene already. the random the yeah, the random guy and he goes, Oh good, if it isn't info nympho and Peter Pants. <laughs> and she says, I I prefer Tinkle Bell, thank you. I love the fact that Tamara, because when I saw her P and the yeah, the black hearts dance. We were worried. I'm thinking, okay, it's funny as hell, but it's also not funny for the teenager that did it. Of course. But she is not worried about it at all. No, she no, is no, told, no. She is confident. She's turned it. It's yeah, great. she has. And I mean, back then, you know, she even wished, just like everybody else did. She remember she wished that she had pink eye and had the the lip oh, thing. Oh, you're when, right. Yeah, I she totally she wanted to. She, you know, she she wished it was her too. And remember, when she was like. Um, she just she just wants in there yeah to be popular for any reason mm-hmm. good or bad she wants to be a part of the crowd that's so funny it's so funny um and we definitely saw a a more vulnerable side of Sadie uh-huh going into the episode and and after everything happened so um viciously with Ricky yes um you know, after she went over to Jenna's house and she was hanging out and her soon to be right. aunt, which is uh, Jenna's mom's best friend, uh, yeah. um, she walked outside and after listening to all of the women talk, she called Ricky and so sweetly said, did you mean what you said to me? All of those things. And it was right. just like, oh, Sadie has a, a soft spot. Well, I like it. that and see now that scene with all those drunk women talking. Oh, my God. So many things happened. So in there. many. I, and they, you know, t- they tie into all of our topics. They tie into everything. Too, yeah, so. they do. And I gave up trying to write notes yeah. on that thing. But what I did see was in the middle of them talking about love or sex or, you know, and how they're related, uh, that's when Sadie was sitting there and she kind of had a look that she was kind of self reflecting, like, yeah. oh, wait a minute, you know? And so that's why she went out and called Ricky because she, you know, she heard this advice exactly. from these older, more experienced women and took it to heart yeah. and, you know, reflected on herself, which <clears throat> it's not something that you would expect to see Sadie's character ever do mm-hmm. is to be self-reflective. Especially this early on in the season. I mean, I guess it's not that early, but I don't know. I guess I just didn't see it coming. So, yeah, I think you think the perfect what you said is perfect. She's vulnerable, mm-hmm. meaning all of a sudden she's now potentially can be attached to Ricky. Yes. You know, and and like and she's and, liking the attention which means she can get hurt if Ricky decides yeah, to I mean, stop yeah. giving it. Yes. And she she's got a wall up cuz she's mm-hmm. like don't get excited but meet but call me later. I mean, of all boys to pick, he's the worst to be vulnerable with, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because why does she think that what he's saying is true? Exactly. There's no reason to believe He says it to everyone. <laughs> there's no reason to believe anything he says. Um but it was really, I mean, yeah, she, when they were talking in the hall and she was like, you know what? No, forget it. Nothing ever. Don't, no band geeks, you know. And he, but he kept his sweet talk going. She right. was like, okay, well, a parting gift. Meet me after school. Exactly. And there was one thing that uh, Ricky said. He was pretty funny throughout the entire episode and he had a lot of airtime, which was nice to see. Yes. I enjoy his character in the story. Um, but he said that he gave up Ban and he gave up his, what was it, his tender s- yeah, something he, and he, he, gave, he yeah. turned it in for a tender Saxton. <laughs> yes, he gave his tender sax. <laughs> yeah, and, and turned it in for a tender sax. <laughs> it was I just laughed out loud. I love yeah, it. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Okay, so uh, thanks to Marissa Movies, I can remind our readers about iTunes. Um, uh, for our iTunes, 
As you guys know, all of our after shows are available as podcasts on iTunes. You can subscribe to your favorite show. You can subscribe to the After Buzz channel on YouTube. Uh, most importantly, you can help us by giving us feedback and rate on iTunes. Um, if it's, your, you know, for our regular listeners, maybe you get tired of hearing me say it, but it's actually a way that you can tell a friend, say, hey, go on iTunes. If you like After Buzz, it actually helps. It keeps us, uh, our, our, our little icons, our little podcast icons, closer to the front page and, and, and more, get more views and more listens, etc. So it only takes a minute. Tell a friend. Uh, to check out After Buzz, rate, comment yourself. Uh, there's a new podcast app from Apple that you can get that will make all of this stuff even easier. The listening, the subscribing, the rating, the commenting. Um, I and, and uh, Crystal and I and Annie and Isabel, we actually do read and go look at the ratings and the comments. We look for them. And so you can tell us good or bad. We like it and appreciate it. Yes, and I didn't see any this week, so please. Yes. Listen, view, and write. Okay, now, Jenna and Jake, is it love? And yes, at the end, we want to know if they had sex. Um, tell me what you think. Gee, where to begin? Um, I I think you said that they don't have chemistry. I think that they do have a little bit of chemistry. I think this entire season has been Jenna coming into a new Jenna. And I think, in, you know what? It's interesting because in relationships, you shouldn't have to um, think about whether or not you have certain feelings for someone as much as she does. But she's really kind of evolved into who she is with Jake as a couple. And I think this episode was the breaking point in her saying, I really do like him. I really do have feelings for him. I am friends with Maddie and that's okay. And you know what? He is the sweetest and he continually reminds her that he's sweet, he loves her, and he's there. Eh. <laughs> no, I, I, no, no, no. There is no <laughs> chemistry. What, here's, here's what they have. Okay. Here's the chemistry they have. They have the same amount of chemistry that you, who's spoken for, if you're you're watching the show and you see he put a bed of roses in the minivan. It's very sweet. Oh, it's so sweet. That's the level. Whatever you felt when you saw that and you went, oh, that's the same level that Jenna is feeling. She is forcing herself to say, oh, I do love. I would. No, she doesn't. She does it in moments and little like bursts of feeling whenever he does that. Oh, sweet stuff. But that's it. All she has to do is think about Maddie or see him walking down the street and she's like, oh, hoo, hoo. well, I never said that I don't think that she's over Maddie because I think that she still has feelings for him. But right. I do truly think that Jenna is falling in love with the idea of being in love Jake? with Jake. Did you get, did you get that? that falling good. in love with the idea of falling in love. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yes. That I'm closer to agreeing mm -hmm. with okay. on that. Okay. But um, but no, it's whatever it is. It's like it's all, you know, and. I'm actually, you know, of the school that love is a choice, really one that lasts a long time. You kind of right. choose to do loving things, even when you don't necessarily feel it. Um, but I feel like, you know what, she's they're too young to be at that stage. Oh, of course. I mean, I, I totally agree with you there. But in, you know, the big picture of, of this story and this the series, yeah. um, I, I don't know. I think it was a nice moment when Jenna's mom sat with her and described to her how she had sex with someone before her dad. And yes. then with her dad, it all just happened. And that's when it felt right. And I think that Jenna is obviously very attracted to Maddie. And I think that she still is. And that's OK. I think that she's... Um, falling in love with Jake for who he is and more so than how she was with Maddie. I don't think that she loved Maddie. Yeah. Oh, well, she said she did. Yeah, I think that, well, I think what she has with Maddie is passion and yeah. chemistry and, you know, and what, and also the whole, you know, bad boy thing that every girl, mm -hmm. girls of the world everywhere like. And so, in the mystery of it, whatever. Um, and with Jake, it bugs me that she spends, you know, I don't know, more than half of the time with him questioning. Yes, you know, but there was a conclusion at the end of this episode. Oh, there's a conclusion at every time. <laughs> and so, and yeah, you know what? But this was the first time that she said she now knows that she loves him. Oh, come on. She said you know, that before. You know, I honestly, like, I'm, you know, I, like I have a thought. I'm going to save it for predictions. I need okay. to write it down or I'm not going to You write it down. Her. While you're writing it down, I'm going to say, um, uh, uh, mention move to Val because she goes and she talks to Val again and 
I mean, this didn't come until the end of their conversation, but she was like, look, don't worry. Oh, no, Val called her in, huh? Yes, called because, her down to the principal's office. Because, oh, my God, she put her elbow on the intercom system. <laughs> oh, and you know what? That reminds me. I want I'm, Pause on that. I want to mention that, uh, go back to when Jake and Maddie were talking. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Okay, because... It was so weird. Yes, it was awkward. <laughs> Jake, Jake is telling Maddie, man, I've screwed it up, dude. I told her I loved her. Maddie goes, when did you have sex? <laughs> and Jake's all, I, I didn't yet. Right, you right. Know, we're gonna. The boy ego. Yeah, but I don't, but now I don't know because I think I messed it up. I totally moved, I totally messed it up. And um, what, did, what was Maddie's advice? He, what did he say? He said that he can't take it back and yeah, that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. telling him, dude, you screwed it up. You can't, you got to do sex before you do I love you. Yeah. You forget it. You're. It's out there. You can't take it back. Yeah. He was totally like, uh, uh, put. you know, he's just, you know, helping him feel like he ruined it. Exactly. See, and that's why, that's why, so then Jake, I'm sorry, Maddie knew that the next time he went to talk to Jenna, he's totally got the upper hand and he's sitting there and he's smiling and just teasing her and all this stuff because he knows he can and she and anyway <laughs> anyway their their conversation it was like maddie to me was trying to help jake not he's trying to you know mess it up i didn't get that total vibe though i really didn't i mean i don't think that he at the end of the day is ever going to offer the best advice because he's still keeping a big secret from jake but i don't know i didn't think that he was totally trying to sabotage it this time well um yeah well that's what i'm getting i'm getting my feeling is there's a mixture he's torn mm -hmm. but but i think there's in each time when he's talking to jake or when he's talking to jenna there's an element of sabotage in there He's still trying to see if he can break it up, you know, in in one way or another. Um, uh, so uh, Marissa Movies is letting me know that we've got uh, uh, five minutes left, and so what I want to do is, you have a prediction. I've got a couple more um, awkwardisms, awkwardisms, so I don't because I don't remember all the different you know characters that had them, mm -hmm. and you know, we already talked about Sadie and Ricky. Okay, so the last thing is MTV this time, or the writers of Awkward, really, really took it to a sexual you know, level in this yes. episode. You know, we saw them in the sanctuary. Sadie's so aggressive, so ornery, and grabbing him and talking about, you know, and Val, one of the drunk women, and, and, and Allie mm -hmm. talking about, you know, you know, uh, I didn't, you know, oh, you shouldn't get married unless you have sex with them, um, the mom said, right? And she's all, so oh, I've, I've sampled the goods. She said, you, you know, Val, or, yeah, Val said, I haven't sampled the goods. You haven't sampled the goods? And I said, oh, I've sampled the goods. And he's got a, what she said, oh, he's well in doubt, in the bank. <laughs> but it was all these double entendres, yeah. all these references to sex there and body parts. And Val saying something about the, what do you say, what she do? The, oh, giant VJJ. <laughs> she does like this with her hands, like her putting her hand. I'm going, this is like really. I know. I told you that very, very forward. But what I was thinking in the beginning of the episode is what is the message that MTV is going to let its viewers, because they know the audience for this show. They, they know that, you know, young girls and boys are watching this and older, too, because yeah. we're older. We love the show. Um, but I was so curious to see what they were going to end on. And I thought what they ended on, granted, we didn't see the preview for next week, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but what they ended on was Jenna's mom telling her... Uh, she had a very nice sentimental moment with her yes. and I thought the insight in what she was saying was really nice and you know Jenna of course picked up the phone and, and called Jake and they yes. went and they were planning on having sex and from what we saw although we don't officially know Jake was very sweet in what he said and saying if you don't want to do this we don't have to I don't want to do this and then not be able to get over you I want you to love me yes, too basically yes. so I liked that getting back to MTV I liked the MTV ended the way that they did it wasn't a full-on not thought through action that just happened you right. know they yes. we don't know if they had sex yet that's a big okay. question uh, um what we're going to do is uh for predictions i'm going to ask me and you okay uh you and i if uh what we think if we think they had sex and how, what our prediction our predictions are based on that but right now we're going to go to commercial marissa movies you can take us to that and we'll come back and do a short prediction hey there good buddies the handle's woolly bear 
I'm a truck driving man, but I'm not that old school kind of truck driving man, no. I like to listen to podcasts while I'm driving through these great United States of ours. And my favorite podcasts in the world are from AfterBuzz TV. And why? Because <laughs> AfterBuzz TV is like a post-game wrap-up show for all your favorite TV shows. Like Jersey Shore, Dancing with the Stars, Mad Men, and a whole truckload more. I like listening to my Gossip Girl podcast, catching up with all my fellow fans and getting all the latest news and gossip. You know, I got some strong opinions. And After Buzz TV lets me share those opinions with thousands of other listeners. Holy, what a feeling. I used to doze off on those lonely stretches of road. And don't worry, I got the cruise control. But now I'm wide awake and listening to all the After Buzz TV goodness. <laughs> Check them out. Give them a holler. And tell them the old woolly bear sent you. Commercial from the, the, the hills in the country. Thanks, country Willie Bear. Was. Thanks, Willie Bear. <laughs> okay, we're going to skip news, go straight to predictions. Can you cue that up? Oh, man. Thank you. And now, movies is on it. you're after Buzz TV. Okay, let's do it like this. First, please tell me what you predict for Maddie. For Maddie. Um, what do you think? What do you foresee for him? Well, this is kind of going with Maddie, Jenna, and Go Jake. My prediction is that Jenna is finally going to actually say I love you to Jake, and he is going to have just found out about Maddie and Jenna. And that's going to like How mess it all up. How awkward is that? Yeah. And okay, then, yeah. that would be awkward. Um, what about Sadie, Ricky, Tamara, Ming? I- think that because Ming's got a man now I know I know I I can't decide if Sadie is going to fall for Ricky and he's going to destroy her like he has every other woman or um if I don't I don't know or if she's just going to kind of shrug him off yeah I think can't decide. I think and I think writers here are setting us up because for we watched this episode and for a moment we believed that Ricky really liked her. Yeah. And then I I kind of had to remind myself, wait a minute, he does the same thing to everybody. Yeah. In fact, he comes out of Sanctuary and he looks at Tamara and goes, hey, beautiful. You know. There might be, they might be setting us up for another, I mean, last season we went through having this really sad feeling, at least I did for Sadie, with the whole weight issue and the journal and everything, and we felt really bad for her in one big episode, and then yeah. she turned it around and we we're like, oh, okay, she's the bad girl again. So maybe they're doing that with this episode, and maybe we're going to feel bad for her, and then Ricky's going to flip it and... Maybe, maybe. And as a side note, yes. why did they even call her big? She's not big anymore. It's like I know, she lost she's really weight. Not big. She anyway, looks great. Uh, yeah, it looks great. I don't know how, how they're doing that. But okay, so so you don't know, you don't have I predict that Ricky is absolutely going to cheat on her. And that she is going With Tamara. to Ooh. That would Tamara. make Tamara yes. Tamara have a, a hand up. Yes. Okay. And then okay. yeah, see, and then we feel bad for Sadie. And then we feel bad for Sadie. And then Sadie. she's gonna do something to get back, and then this continues. Okay. Tell me your prediction for uh, Jenna's mom and Val and the husband. I am going to tell you my hope, and that is that the dad will come back and they will make up because I'm getting sad not seeing him. <laughs> I think that last scene uh, where Jenna's mom stepped up and became a real parent. Yeah. I think that is why the dad left, so that could happen. Yeah. So she could realize, you know what? What if I wasn't here? What would you do? You'd have to become a real adult and do it. You know, I think that's what, and so. He's going to hear That's from Jenna point. about that yeah. and then come back, you know, my prediction. Um, and Val, I think, will be in there to cause all kind of games. Okay, funny. so the last and most important prediction, well, or whatever, do you think they had sex? No. I don't think so either. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> we agree. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. I'm your host, uh, Ed Bowling, on Twitter, at Ed Bowling. And I am Crystal Ackley on Twitter at Crystal Lee, and that's L-E-A. Thanks, guys. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. You're You're welcome. welcome. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.